YouTubers, good evening, good night, good morning, whatever time zone you're watching my little transmission here. Uh, I want to do a, a quick uh, gas and oil wars. I want to kind of talk about that a little bit today. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because a majority of us Canadians use vehicles to get to and from work. And a majority of Canadians are paying down vehicles to get them from to and from work. Uh, their job is basically maintaining their vehicle to get them to and from work. So it's kind of sucky if you don't like your job. Anyways, I hope everyone likes their job out there. Um, I'm kind of con I'm c concerned about what's happening. And I, I made a few videos earlier today and yesterday about... Uh, I think we're going to enter into some serious oil wars, uh, fuel fuel wars. I think it's going to get out of control. I, I think it's going to get pretty bad with earlier, like I said, with China uh, unpegging itself from the uh, petrodollar and other countries uh, looking, uh, BRICS nations also looking to unify and create a... Um, dollar for trade uh if you haven't followed or know what the BRICS nations are look them up and see what they've been up to and everybody knows what happens when anyone tries to unpeg from the u.s dollar when it comes to trading um outside of the u.s federal reserve note so a lot of people are sending me articles for gas prices a lot a lot of articles for gas i've never had this many people concerned because a lot of people, like I said, need to go to work to make the money to pay for the gas, right? And it really sucks if they don't like their job on top of it. So let's take a look here. Just make sure everything's recording here. Why gas prices spike in spring and why they might stay high. So you always get the uh, articles to try and calm people down and, you know, usher them in with a new price gouge increase, whatever you want to call it. Gasoline prices have jumped again in Greater Victoria, something that regularly occurs when the daffodils bloom. Why does this keep happening? When will it end? The near record gas price are seeing corresponded to annual shutdown of Burnaby's Parkland refinery. So there's a refinery that closes a few weeks out of the year you know, but it's it, and then it closes down for maintenance and to do create another blend of gas for the summer, and it says here prices can spike as much by twenty percent a liter during the planned six week shutdown. So I don't believe that this is one main reason why a lot of gas prices are going up. This this year the situation exa exacerbated because. Of the Olympic pipeline responsible for, for distributing gas throughout Washington and Oregon was taken offline for five days. This is relevant because generally turned to our American cousin to make up for the seasonal shortage. So, there's lots going on here. So, it says here in quotations. Due to environmental concerns, building a new refinery in this province will, to alleviate the shortage, is a non-starter. So, I think they find it more attractive to not hire people and to not open a refinery and to not... Um, yeah. Alberta, on the other hand, has the refineries and capacity to send out a lot more refined gas to the coast. That's the premise behind the twining of the controversial Kindle Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline. A twinned pipeline is the only viable option that could drop local gas prices dramatically. It doesn't help that BC Alberta are engaging in political spat over a pipeline, with the Alberta Premier threatening to turn off the taps. If that happens, get prepared for prices for more than two bucks a liter. At starting point so lots of controversy going on between the two provinces and 
there's no need for that. There's absolutely zero need for that. We need to be working together with the amount of problems. Now, I brought I put this article up for a reason. It says food costs could go up as Vancouver price, gas prices approach record high. And do you remember when prices went down to 40 bucks a barrel a few years back? The price of gas still stayed the same and it went up. And when the price of gas went up the first time when prices went to 100 plus plus bucks a barrel 6 7 years ago, 120 bucks a barrel back in the day when oil was booming, all the countries, all the oil producing countries were booming and really turning a profit. Fracking was out of control. Do you remember that? And oh yeah, the price of food needs to go up. Yes, the price of food definitely needs to go up because the price of producing the food goes up. The price of, of, of transporting the food goes up. The price of transporting the fuel to make the, 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 the food and stuff, you know, with tractors and stuff go up. So they use that as their leverage of prices going up and blah, 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 and food going up and all this going up. But then the price of oil goes down to 40 bucks a barrel or 35 bucks a barrel. And the price of gas still goes go, still keeps going up. So what happens to that whole, yeah, well, the price of oil went down. Can't they maybe alleviate the price a bit? No, of course not. So it's all politics, guys. Food costs go up as Vancouver gas prices approach record high. Vancouver restaurants are among the many in the region with their eyes fixed on fuel prices as they weigh on to react to high costs at the pumps. The big question of the minds of pizzeria owners is whether they'll need to raise the prices to cover the rising costs of deliveries. Meanwhile, car share companies say their services are a great way for residents to take refuge from the high fuel costs. So another um, industry, several industries that are looking that, looking that way at the price of gas. Gas prices in the region are approaching record highs. Some experts say predict it could uh, press past $1.60 per liter by April. They're the highest fuel costs in North America. Now, a lot of people are saying, you know, and this is a very valid question. We have some of the biggest oil reserves in the world. What's happening? Why is this happening? How could this be happening? Should this be happening? No, of course not. And then what a lot of people start putting the blame on is, ah, uh, well, the, the exchange is down and we got to keep up with the Americans and price of gas needs to go up. That's another excuse they use. What about when the Canadian dollar passed the U.S. dollar? I don't remember if you guys remember this about five years ago, four and a half years ago, where the dollar went at par and Canadian dollar over shot the U.S. dollar. But people were still going south of the border to buy super cheap gas because it was so expensive in Canada. So something needs to give some or some sort of transparency in gasoline needs to come about. Something needs to give. Something needs to make some sort of a balance here. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're paying an extra 600 to 1400 a year in gasoline and car insurance is going up on top and and the cost of operating a vehicle going up, it's it's it's. And, and 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 wages staying stagnant and wages not moving in 10 years so so that's another there article here people shaking their heads record highs on the way for BC gas prices analyst warns so I'm picking on BC because it's almost a buck 60 a liter Okay, Ontario is still paying 125, 130 a liter. Here in Merritt, I'm paying 129. Today, I went to go fill up at 129 a liter. Right, so, and mind you, I don't have to drive a lot here, which is really nice. I drive maybe seven kilometers to 15 kilometers a week in my little town, just booting around, doing things, you know. Drivers of British Columbia could brace for record high gasoline prices this summer and the financial pain is that the potential to spread across the country says petroleum industry analyst prices across vancouver hit about a buck 55 over the weekend while victoria remained a buck 40 vancouver island could see an eight cent a liter leap as the ripple from short supplies and climbing local taxes spread 
So this is... Yeah, and with Vancouver, the gas stations being sold off because the land values to build condos, they're shutting down more and more gas stations in, in the city of Vancouver and Burnaby too, apparently. And West Van, apparently. Impact of more vehicles. Vehicle choices by people in Metro Vancouver could be a part of the equation for the high prices. The consumers in British Columbia are accepting light vehicle ownership at record paces. At That means that are millions more vehicles on the road, he said. I don't care how fuel efficient they are. That's obviously going to mean an impact on climate change. Ugh, climate change again. In comparison to what cars fuel used to burn back in the day with lead and stuff, one one lead vehicle, gasoline like crap, 60s, 70s vehicle from back in the day, in compare, it, it, it's in, it burns more in fossil fuels and emissions than 70 smart cars today, 80 smart cars today. And that was one vehicle from back in the day. And what's happening with our price wars? OPEC scrambles to justify output cuts. <sighs> Oil and inventories are approaching a five-year average level. OCD, OECD countries, all the important threshold for rebalancing the oil markets. Remember back in a year and a half, two years ago, they tried to balance the market with output. To so keep the price of gas, oil going up because it kept going down. And Saudi Arabia was pushing for $20 a barrel. But don't worry, in Canada, if oil does go to $20 a barrel, it'll go to $2 a liter if it goes to that. So don't, don't worry. Why would it go to $2 a liter? They need to offset the economy. We're so heavily dependent on oil exports. Oil um, prices went down. They have to raise the price of gas, food, natural gas, man, clothing, everything you can throw at, throw anything at. A year and a half from OPEC's original deal to limit output, their surplus oil stash in, store, in storage tanks around the world are nearly back to average levels. However, by all indications, OPEC is not ready to ease up on the production caps, with top officials signaling a desire to keep the cuts in place into, into 2019. So, it goes on to say here, uh, this might require changing the definition of balanced oil market. OPEC has consistently helped o OECD inventories at the metric upon which it is basing its calculations. The goal was to drain invest inventories back down to a five-year average with OC OECD inv inventories about 44 million barrels above the threshold in february down from roughly 300 million 300 million barrel surplus at the start of 2017 the goal will likely be achieved at some point this year perhaps in the second or third quarter so god why is this happening let's move on 70 dollar oil could spark an offshore oil boom and that's where oil's pushing towards. It had a little bit of a, a little bit of a boom that it's been dro uh, dropped today a bit. Geopolitical risk bearing down on global oil markets is increasing, taking hold on weighing on oil prices as Saudi Arabia and iron, an uh, and iron jockey for the influence, and position in the Middle East. These concerns escalate just over a week on when Saudi Arabia's young prince, slammed. Tough rhetoric over Iran, pledging to acquire nuclear weapons if needed. Iran develops them. If indeed, if Iran develops them. Oh, God. It's going to look like a more problem. This bit bigger problem. It's. Yeah. Not looking good, guys. Not looking good. Seven missiles closer to Iran war and a hundred dollar oil barrel. So, you know that Yemen 
uh, fired, if they call them pro-Iranian rebels, fired seven missiles into Saudi Arabia this weekend. The missiles were intercepted, blah, blah, blah. And this could spark a huge, huge oil pandemic like it was in the uh, 70s with the, uh, was it Iran embargo? I can't remember what that was. Was it back in the early 70s when the price of gas stations were running out of gas because of that whole huge oil embargo and stuff? Yeah, it was a huge problem. But anyways, guys, let me get to my point. After looking into all this and finding out what's going on, why is the price of gas spiking head over heels? Why is this happening? It all points to taxes, guys. All of it points to taxes. I don't think we're transparent enough in where the taxes are going. And now with this new carbon tax kicking in in different provinces, I'm paying for my house last month close to $200 in carbon tax. It was like $189. And I read my gas bill to you guys. So carbon taxes are not helping the middle class. Um, price of gas is going up. And it affects the middle class or the working poor. Anything that affects any increase, it's always targeted to the middle class, right? Because the poor can't pay it. The rich don't want to pay it, definitely. And it's the working middle class, the private sector workers that basically feel the brunt of it. You know what I'm saying? I want to know what you guys think. What's happening? Price of uh, car insurance going up. Price of uh, gas going up. Price of oil is looking steady from what I'm seeing here. I'm scared. If if oil goes down to 20 bucks a barrel, our price of gas will go up to two, three bucks a liter because we're not offsetting our revenues. Uh, we're not balanced. You know, we were so hung, gung-ho on oil and, and it's staying at $120 a barrel for the longest time and look what happened. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think. Why is this happening? Oil wars in the loom in our future i don't want it to because like i said it's just the middle class that suffers let me know what you guys think comment below